Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the NASDAQ Dorsey Wright podcast. My name is Miles. I'm joined here by Will. How you doing, Will? Good, man. How are you? We're living life today. We're going to be going through uh, first starting off with some performance stuff, then kind of going through just the hodgepodge of stuff, talking about some earnings. That's really getting roll, rolling next week. But to start really off with the performance we saw over the last seven days or so, pretty positive across the board. Pretty much everything that we typically talk about landing in the green. couple outliers, if, if we'll call them that, crude oil and the U.S. dollar in the red there. But besides that, really everything from a broad perspective, including fixed income representatives, uh, internationals, just regular domestic equities, S&P 500, up for the week. Yeah, I think it's like in summary, if I were to summarize it, oof, redundant, whatever, is as expected. Because yeah. you had equities moving up, yields cooling off dollar finally pulling back a lot of our indicators that we talked about on the past couple of podcasts we talked about them in our report that we're just showing kind of wash out scenarios if you guys follow things on twitter or whatnot i'm sure a lot of technicians were screaming about like how bad breadth was so the the bounce the kind of risk on bounce made sense I, yeah. I think i think that makes sense but there's you know some areas that were probably were oversold just Utilities, for example, oh, right? We didn't, weren't going to plan to go there today, but I mean, utilities, historic, very yeah. historic low breath that we saw over the last couple of weeks. They're having a nice bounce this week. Still wouldn't touch them. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think utilities have been hurt by higher interest rates for sure. Same with um, consumer staples a bit. Uh, I think there's a similar argument to be made there. We'll we'll talk more about staples later. But yeah, I mean, overall, kind of over, oversold sectors bouncing as we, we would expect. And seasonally, too, kind of as we would expect back half of September, historically weak, on par. And then end, end of the year typically tends to be much better. Yeah, you were ta- you and I were talking about this just the other day. It just feels like we need more, though, right? Like it, it like feels- seasonality isn't enough. Yeah, and, and like yeah. oversold isn't enough, right? Like yeah. we had the this uh, CPI come out today. That was relatively in line. Headline was a, a bit hot, but right. that was also comes out after yesterday's um, pretty good run yesterday. Yeah. Yes, um, but point is, is that you know we we just feels like we need a bit more. Yeah, yeah, I I would agree. Like I don't know if seasonality is enough of a catalyst and oversold conditions already bouncing as enough of a catalyst to kind of keep us running here. I think earnings maybe could be. I know there are some charts that we wanted to run through today that are pretty interesting to us. A lot of names that look pretty good that haven't reported yet. And then some that have reported, maybe aren't responding as we'd expect. Like I'll pick it up a lot like Delta Airlines. I think that one already came out this morning. I saw a headline, Delta Airlines. Profit jumps almost 60% after strong summer. They cited international travel being super robust. So, um, But and, the guidance will. What was the guidance? Yeah, so so apparently guidance was not what the market was hoping for, which is why you're not getting more of a positive reaction. Because yeah. looking at that chart, from a technician's point, like this thing's so oversold. It's back at the bottom of a trading range. I, I, I expect a bit of a bounce. Earnings could be the catalyst for that. Not really doing. Yeah, if it wouldn't have broken back into a negative trend, that would have been a massive reversal shakeout pattern. Just to <laughs> throw yeah. that out there. But yeah, no, I mean, just to talk about the guidance for a second, it seems like markets just care about. I mean, for good reason. But point being, you know, you beat massively today. Yeah, market immediately shrugs that off and say, "What about tomorrow?" Anyways, yeah, that's yeah, that that's the constant like discounting mechanism. It's like, yeah, this is what has previously happened in the future. What do you expect? Like markets are always forward looking. So maybe that's why there's the tendency to over emphasize. But anyway, I, I think Delta was an interesting one. JP Morgan was another interesting one that you and I were talking about earlier. That one comes out, was it tomorrow? Right? Yes. Yeah. So we're we're, we're recording this on Thursday. So this will probably be out. JP Morgan will be out with earnings by the time that this comes out, but that chart pretty interesting to me is really hugged that positive trend line. The sell signals have been kind of head fakes in a longer term uptrend. So we'll see what they do. It's a four attribute right now. So technically looks, looks pretty good coming into earnings. Right. Exactly. I mean, and, and you see financials just as a broad group in general have been relatively weak. Of course, that's been held down by a lot of those smaller and regional banks. How do you think they're, they're dealing? We haven't really heard too much about regional banks over the, they've been out of the headlines Knock on wood, we don't want to see them in the headlines. Unfortunately, there's a lot Probably of right now, bad yeah. news that could be coming out about yeah. those rates kind of continuing to churn higher. We've seen a bit of a cool bit cool down, but what do you think? I mean, about that? No yeah, I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen much. I mean, it was the there, there's a regional banking and index fund KRE, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, KRE. I, I haven't looked at KRE lately. 
I mean, two point. It doesn't look very good to be honest right now. It's down thirty percent this year. Two and a half fun score. A bunch of sell signals. No, that doesn't look like there's really any trend reversing yet. So maybe market expectation is still for some weakness. Yeah, I, I mean, I anticipate that's probably the case. Just because they're out of the headlines doesn't mean they're not hurting with some yeah. of their exposure to these kind of long duration focused areas. Um, but anyways, we, we got off topic. JP Morgan certainly going to be kind of a, a a name to watch for a, a bellwether of of the sector in in general. So yeah, yeah, you had a, you had one other one, right, or two others? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple others. The, the other one from a weak sector that I think is is worth watching is going to be UNH. So healthcare. I always typically just start with a top down approach. So I look at the, the sector first, um, not discounting bottom up. Approach yeah, by any sure. means, but point is, I, I look at healthcare in general. It's been a, a weak group recently, overpassed by communication services within the Dolly rankings. So you're seeing some some relative weakness from the area. But UNH really been a notable standout, right? It's one of the larger names within the within the area. Two consecutive buys on 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 its default chart here, five for Fiverr. It's reporting on Monday as well. So another kind of name to look out for mm-hmm. is is UNH. And before you jump in, I noticed we're we're just talking about the bigger names. Smaller cap, small small caps have really been getting hammered recently, and they still are today too. Yeah, you've seen a pretty big divergence. Like small caps, I think as we're recording this, are down over one percent, while the Nasdaq 100 and, and Nasdaq Composite are, are positive on, on the day. So yeah, small caps have been struggling a lot. We did get a bounce from those over the past week, as we were kind of hoping for the Russell 2000, like that 1700 area, kind of caught a bid where we would expect, but by no means in an uptrend. I think like structurally for small caps, you'd really like to see them get out of the trading range. Same with equal weighted S&P and, and the like. Yeah, I mean that just has to talk with talk about the breadth that we've seen going back to the start of the call, right? You're just seeing a decreasing amount of stocks just across the market participating. But if you want to look for some silver lining, we've seen the market churn higher, um, really throughout 2023 so far, kind of pre-summer, if you mm-hmm. will, but churn higher with with low participation. So that doesn't mean necessarily that we're done. Yeah, but we're not out of the woods. I would say. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I, I think it's tough to be euphoric about the market broadly when you have small caps, equal weighted assets, just not participating and performing as well as bigger cap weighted names. But like that's been the story for years on years and people have continued to make money. So there's that famous saying, you know, markets can remain irrational lot longer than you can re- remain solvent. If you wait for everything to look positive, you're, you're probably at some type of top, but yeah, I've, I've also seen these headlines which are like the most hated bull market in history or something like that. Like just no one wants to believe it, which I, I don't blame them. There's there's good evidence, you know, for it to, to be skeptical for sure. No, yeah, I mean you're right. I mean, and, and talking about the the recent news print today, like I think you said after our, our morning call, if your target is two percent inflation and you're coming out with you know four point three percent year over year, that's still a ways off. Yeah. So yeah, you've got the higher for longer uh kind of camp pounding the table. Saying, look at this. Yeah. Um, but that is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. One more earnings name that I almost forgot was was Pepsi. Yeah. They were, I won't call it off cycle, but they they reported earlier this week ahead of traditional big names that we led with today. So Pepsi was an interesting one, I think, from a from a top-down point of view, like where you're talking about kind of starting sector and then drilling down. Consumer stable have just been obliterated over the past couple of weeks, which is really rare for that sector. It's not a sector that gets beat up. Like it's your defensive name. Just like grandma goes to store, like she's always buying this stuff. We're always buying these things. Pepsi, Mondelez, Coke's in there, Costco, Walmart, companies like that. Target recently got added in there. So Pepsi came out pretty decent earnings. They also saw a bounce on their chart at a likely area of support. Like a lot of these bounces came at pretty likely areas of support major indexes at bottom of trading ranges, in this case, Pepsi at the bottom of a trading range as well, that 154, 156 area, pretty likely bounce up three attribute stock. But I think I think the bigger story from Pepsi is kind of the trend of the sector. And you, you were actually telling me about this on a call. I apparently had my head in the sand, but Miles, you messaged me when I was doing the morning brief and you're like, hey, have you heard of this? What is it called? That's uh, like Ozempic is what yeah. it's called. It's a yeah. weight loss management I don't know if yeah. that's really what it's supposed to be used for, but it it's kind of got a, a side effect. It makes you a little bit less hungry. So probably some of the the 
Pepsi, the Fritos probably aren't flying off the, the shelves yeah. as fast, which is what the market was concerned about. But it seemed like they got a they weren't as affected as they were anticipated to be. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, because I mean we're 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 technical guys, but we're not oblivious. We're just you know stick our hand head in the sand to everything else. And we were talking about on a research call, like why are staples getting beat up to this degree? I mean, like, yeah, the, the market got beat up end of September, but staples did as well and they really haven't recovered. So like, what's the story there? And like you alluded to, a lot of these big name brands are they, these big companies have smaller brands like Fritos and whatnot on the shelf. There's, there's images like you'd be surprised how one company owns so many things yes. on the supermarket shelf. So we think that might be some of the reason that why they're so depressed and I have to have stayed depressed in terms of price. I, I put a piece in our worry aware, just looking at the distribution of individual names within XLP, which is that staples fund. And like every single name is oversold except for Costco. Right. Well, there's your favorite. We talked about this. I remember, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I maybe know. a couple of months ago, but you love your Costco. I know. Um, but I come from a Coke family myself, so I'm not going to be touching Pepsi regardless of the size <laughs> of the <laughs> Um, But no, that's interesting. And then the other portion of it, like Target, Dollar General's in there. Yeah. They might not be as affected by this uh, Ozempic drug, but we're also talking about some of the slippage that we've gotten from where theft is is that a yeah. historic high so that's kind of another thing that that might be playing into it just from an actual day-to-day um, operation standpoint they're mm-hmm. they're losing some of their product as well so yeah we were i was reading the snacks daily with with you the other day which is a fun like morning quick hitter newsletter they were talking about self-checkout kiosks how they're trying to take those out of stores they, they say like Trader Joe's like doesn't have them and they had much lower levels of theft compared to others. Right. Yeah. And so side side story, my, my mom's probably listening to this podcast and she'll find this funny. So years ago when they started putting self-checkout in stores, she would like boycott them because she wanted the people work in the cash register to keep their job. So, <laughs> so she would like, e- even though there's like a line of 20 people at an individual, she would stay there. And then people like started do- joining the line with her. She, she was some like soft protester. Yeah, don't you think it's funny how like way back when they're like, oh, we have to, we have to go to robots. We have to go to the self-checkout yeah. because it's going to save us money because they didn't want to pay the people to sit at, at the checkout line. Right. Now they're saying people are stealing so much <laughs> that it's actually more cost effective to just pay the people <laughs> to actually scan the items. So that way yeah. we don't have people ringing up a TV as a banana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 85 bananas. <laughs> no, that's, you know, I, yeah, that, that's a really interesting point which the, the bears out there was like, that's inflationary, you know, yeah. like we're going to have to be hiring more people at <laughs> wage growth. You know, like that's just a joke, but yeah, no, that's, that, that's been an interesting read, just an interesting story. I think you, you and I have been following. So if you're listening to this, definitely go check it out. There's some really interesting trends there. Yeah. And then speaking of, of were you aware, so I'm writing one today actually. So it'll be out in the report tomorrow for y'all. We've been talking about sectors that have been, uh, pretty bad. So healthcare, financials, staples, talking about a sector that's stayed pretty resilient. It's been the industrial group. Last name that I'll just throw out there, defense names with some uh, unrest in Israel recently has have been in topics of conversation. They've seen some, some recent jumps. General Dynamics is one that looks pretty decent. GD, it's a three for fiver. Only qualm I have with it is it's in pretty heavily overbought territory. But nonetheless, if you are talking with your clients about some of those defense names, as they undoubtedly hear about them in in yeah. the kind of the day to day news and everything like that, General Dynamics is one I would look towards. Staying away from 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 Raytheon, although they might be uh, the forefront of your mind, uh, they're not good technically per se. Yeah, yeah, and and we're to talk, talking about this on the call too when you're doing the warrior wears like. A, a broader fund like PPA, which yeah. is the air, aerospace and defense, uh, this thing's looked good for a while. Oh, yeah. So it, it, it's not like these things just shot up due to some headlines over the weekend, not to make light of it, but they they look technically pretty good for yes. a while. No, yeah. and that's why I, said, I mean, the, the, the overall sector of the industrials group is second, only falling behind technology in the DALI group yeah. or in the DALI rankings. So in, industrials for quite some time, including transports. I mean, there's a bunch of those names as well. Transports have been an area of strength. So that's that. Yeah. I, I forgot to add something earlier too, talking about like staples, utilities, traditionally more defensive sectors. I think they've had trouble with higher interest rates among other things like the resale theft and, and 
kind of health, weight loss, push, all that. But like you're seeing the defensive sectors continue to underperform your traditionally more offensive sectors, like staples, underperforming discretionary, utilities, not, you know, beating out technology or what other comp, com, com services and stuff like that. So that's maybe a silver lining as well. Cause typically when you see the defensive groups outperform, it's, it's not a good environment for broader market, right? Broader risk on stuff. But I would part with that is like, that's kind of a silver lining to the staples weakness and utilities weakness completely off topic from the, the, the from the defense stuff though. No, I think it's worth, worth mentioning. I mean, when your yield is a 2.75 and you can go out and get a, you know, five percent treasury. Percent treasury, treasury. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, what, what's what's the point? I mean, if you're looking for defensive names, they've already gotten beat down and your yield isn't isn't that great. So, you know, just go buy something. Yeah, it makes sense. But it makes sense. I guess yeah. that's the new new environment that we're seeing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and we've we're like rambling about it now, but like, yeah, I mean, we've we've talked about it for a while. Like higher interest rates are good for investors, I would say. It's painful to get there. But I would argue that it's a good thing because now you have options, stocks have competition, the whole Tina trade, you know, there is no alternative, I think is losing some steam because there's a real opportunity cost for not investing in fixed income now. So I, I think it's good for asset allocators, especially people that need a income. But we'll see how it all plays out. Um, instead of better, I'm, I'm an optimist. <laughs> I tend to be an optimist. That's a good thing. Yeah. All right. You got anything else for the people? I do not. No, no. All right. Well, we'll 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 conclude. Thanks everybody for listening or watching on YouTube. We really appreciate it. Miles and I always love to chat. Mainly Miles. Miles is typically the one talking on phones. I do some of the emailing, but we always like to stay in touch. So if you have questions, if you want to reach out about the podcast, let us know. Otherwise, if you have any other ideas, like if stuff that you want to see on the podcast, I always say just just toss it out there and we'll we'll see what we can do to incorporate it yeah we would appreciate that all right we'll see you next week see you next week